Welcome to Lecture 9, The Future of the Last Mile. In this lecture, we will talk about artificial intelligence or AI and find out more about drones, robots, and the future of transportation. What are some of the current applications of AI in transportation? One of the top priorities is the deployment of autonomous buses for public passenger transportation. And there's also significant research in areas of autonomous trucks for goods delivery and railway cargo transportation. So exactly what is an autonomous vehicle? The Society of Automobile Engineers International, or SAE, standards include six levels of automation. For on-road vehicles, starting at level zero, which simply means no automation at all. All the newest cars on the market now have driver assistance features, such as stability control, cruise control, etc., and classify as level one vehicles. Tesla and Volvo sell cars with well-known Level 2 partial automation features like Tesla's Autopilot or Volvo's Pilot Assist 2. For both Level 1 and 2 vehicles, drivers monitor the environment and must have their hands on the wheel at all times. A Level 3 vehicle is capable of conditional automation, meaning the vehicle can safely control all aspects of driving in a mapped environment Although drivers are still required to be present, monitoring and managing changes in road environments or unforeseen scenarios. To date, no level 3 and above vehicles have hit the market yet, although several prototypes are in testing and development phases. A level 4 vehicle has reached self driving automation for predefined routes. No driver interaction is needed, and the vehicle will stop itself if any systems fail. Drivers, however, are required to be present and can manually drive if conditions change. A fully automated Level 5 vehicle is not designed with steering wheels or gas and brake pedals. The human's input is presetting the destination. Building capability in such a vehicle to handle all environments is a huge challenge that involves fine-tuning sensors and massive computing power. Drivers are not required to be present at all in this vehicle. In a bid to reduce private vehicle usage, many countries have been working on improving their public passenger transportation networks. The deployment of autonomous buses is one such initiative. Small-scale autonomous bus trials have been initiated all over the world in recent times, most prominently in Finland, Singapore and China. The applicability is highly dependent on environment-specific factors such as quality of road surfaces, density of built-up structures, type of city infrastructures, etc. Too Simple, founded in 2015, is based in San Diego, USA and operates several facilities in both US and China. The company has developed what it describes as the world's most advanced autonomous driving system, specifically designed to meet the unique demands of heavy-duty trucks. The level 4 self-driving trucks gather data using cameras, lidars, radars, and its proprietary computer vision technology. The information gathered is then processed by the company's proprietary AI technology. In 2021, Too Simple raised 1 billion US dollars from listing their shares on NASDAQ, the first self-driving technology company to go public in the US, turning its two co-founders into instant billionaires. So, is a Level 5 fully automated truck possible at all? In June 2019, Swedish AV startup Enride began testing its all-electric delivery vehicle on a public road in Sweden. As part of a year-long trial, their teapot truck became, began daily freight deliveries in the city of Jean Coping, and their 26-ton truck operated completely remotely via 5G network and doesn't even have a driver cabin at all. Top American big box retailer, Walmart, has been working with a startup called Getic on an autonomous truck delivery pilot. Since 2019, their trucks have been operating on a two-mile route between the dark store, which is a store that stocks items for fulfillment but isn't open to the public, and a nearby neighborhood supermarket. Since then, the trucks have racked up 70,000 miles in autonomous mode with a safety driver. In 2021, they're going to take their partnership to the next level by removing the safety driver and adding a second route covering a much longer distance. Truck platooning is yet another alternative autonomous model. 
only one driver is required for the lead vehicle, which is connected to the following vehicles using a wireless vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication system. The rear vehicles are able to safely operate at closer distances to form a platoon while taking commands for accelerating, braking and turning from the lead vehicle. This model increases the freight that a single driver can haul, reduces labour and fuel costs, and more importantly, the use of best-in-class anti-collision technologies improves overall safety for the entire platoon. Besides intelligent trucks, there are also intelligent trains. GE Transportation has developed intelligent locomotives which talk to the operators and maintenance crews. Based on the same concept known as Internet of Things or IoT, real-time data is collected, sent and received over the internet to facilitate decision making. So how does an intelligent locomotive work? It is fitted with thousands of sensors which gather data on brake performance, motor temperature and external conditions etc. Data is fed to machine learn analytic applications which then enables operators and maintenance crews to improve the speed and accuracy of real-time decision making on operational and maintenance issues, ultimately reducing locomotive failure rate and increasing safety levels. An unmanned aerial vehicle or UAV commonly known as the drone, is an aircraft without a human being on board. It may operate under remote control by a human operator or autonomously guided by just on-board computers. Military operations for surveillance are often in difficult conflict territories. The ability to offer better intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance and high-quality real-time data quickly is the key to success for many organisations. That is where drones come in really useful. In today's world, however, drones have evolved into tools used in a wide range of civilian areas, including even disaster response and humanitarian logistics. For example, drones can be deployed in locations which are unsafe and hazardous for human beings. This includes high-tension electrical towers, oil bunkers, sites of raging fires and mountainous areas where search and rescue operations are being carried out. Drones are also useful for delivering critical medicine and emergency supplies, to remote areas which are hard to access. From a commercial perspective, there has been widespread interest in leveraging on the speed of drones to deliver many things ranging from business parcels to e-commerce shopping items to prescription medication and even food. On 20 May 2019, DHL launched its first drone delivery solution for last mile deliveries in Guangzhou, China. DHL is the first international express company to provide deliveries by UAV in China. For the first customized delivery route of 8 km, one-way delivery time was reduced from 40 minutes to 8 minutes, saving costs of up to 80% per delivery, with reduced energy consumption and carbon footprint compared with road transportation. JD.com, China's e-commerce giant, has been making deliveries to remote areas using drones since 2016. It is time-consuming and difficult to reach these areas where order and population density are low. The drone program makes deliveries to these areas more efficient. Why is this so? A round trip between the depot and a suburban village takes a delivery man up to an hour by tricycle. A delivery UAV takes 6 minutes across the mountains. Each drone has a maximum payload of 30 kilograms, more than enough for delivery of everything from fresh food to clothing to even electronics. Villages such as Xuanya village nestled in mountains at high altitude can take up to 6 hours by car plus 2 hours of vertical climbing to reach. Local doctors need to travel a whole day just to reach the patients. Villagers need to travel a whole day just to buy a bottle of water. In 2018, the China Foundation for Poverty Alleviation, also known as the Siyuan Foundation, launched China's first UAV mobile clinic in partnership with JD.com. A new telemedicine mobile application lets villagers get remote doctor consultations without having to leave their homes high up in the mountains. After a consultation, JD's drones drop off the much-needed medicine in just 4 minutes. Every journey the drones take helps contribute to the health and well-being of people in the village. So if drones are really that useful, why is it that your pizza may never be delivered by drones in Singapore? Top on the list of reasons is the problematic noise. Noise made by road traffic has been judged to be less annoying than the high-pitched buzzing made by many drones. Next on the list is the problem of rugged drones. Like birds with no sense of direction, a drone that has lost its way and is sighted in the vicinity of an airport runway can be quite a scare and force authorities to close down runways, bring all flight operations to a standstill. 
This happened in June 2019 in the Changi Airport where runways were closed and flights, more than 40 flights were cancelled. In 2018, it also happened at London's Gatwick Airport. The risk of drones or any flying object falling out of the sky is always very real. A drone could crash when poor planning leads to it running out of juice or power. A mechanical malfunction could also lead to sudden loss of power. There might also be collisions with birds, light aircraft, and even other drones. Engineers may put in extra mortals, batteries, navigation systems with intelligent controls, and backup systems. But will regulators give their approval? In a high population density urban setting city such as Singapore, where more than 80% lives stacked one on top of another in high rise HDB flats, privacy is always a matter of concern. With advances in drone technology, many drones are now equipped with a wide spectrum of audio and video capabilities, and these pose a threat to the privacy of people. Integrating drones into the increasingly congested airspace around us is a very complex undertaking. Most countries now have or will soon have rules in place for anything for small drones flying for recreation purpose to big ones for commercial purpose. Under Singapore's laws, it is an offence to operate drones within 5 kilometres of the airport. In the US, laws state that drones must be less than 25 kilograms and can only fly up to 400 feet. So it's different for every country. And we have to consider, with the many solutions that it brings, it will also bring many other problems. There are of course many drone trials around the world, in Galway, Ireland, MANA drones are now doing 2,000 to 3,000 flights a day. The suitcase-sized drones fly at 80 km power and have been busy delivering coffees, burgers, and even broccoli. Apparently, the coffee arrives piping hot and foam intact because the drone is so fast that it does 7 to 8 deliveries an hour. At 10% of the cost, it's not only cheaper, it's better. MANA is still perfecting their drones but has already obtained European-wide licenses and looks forward to expanding across Ireland and onwards towards the half-billion-person European market. Closer to home, Google-backed delivery and e-commerce firm Dunzo Digital is working with the local government in the state of Telangana in India to establish a drone-based network for the delivery of essential medicines and medical equipment across the state. The objective is to ensure healthcare equity for the remote rural areas. In 2021, the business has grown exponentially with over 20,000 orders delivered just between March to May. In 2017, Tesco conducted a trial in London using a six-wheel robot from Starship Technologies to deliver shopping orders. Each battery-powered robot can carry items within the three-mile radius of stores or delivery hubs. Each robot is equipped with GPS technology, nine cameras and sensors to help it navigate and handle obstacles. It can climb curbs of up to 20 cm tall and also works in snow up to 20 cm deep. Fast forward to 2020 when the coronavirus pandemic rocked the world, Starship Technologies' fleet of rolling delivery robots turned out to be a lifesaver for locals. As people are socially distanced from others by staying at home, the little six-wheel robots shuttered groceries and dinner orders around the town with absolutely no human contact required at all. Neolix Technologies, founded in China in 2018, is one of countless startups developing self-driving delivery vehicles. Precision navigation is made possible using a combination of sensors and HD maps while a cloud platform allows full remote control and analytics. Neolix claims it has sold 225 vehicles to customers like Huawei, Alibaba, Meituan Tianping, and JD.com over the past two years, deployed in 10 cities across China. In February 20, they raised $29 million US dollars in a Series A plus financing round. The new funds will go a long way towards mass production. So why may Red Mart never deliver your groceries using a robot van? The key limitation is that this method still needs a human to complete the transaction. After all, the robot van can't take the lift to your house, at least not yet. A human needs to go to the curbside to collect the package. One solution proposed by Ford Motto is for a small robot to bring the parcel from the vehicle to the doorstep or leave it at a prearranged accessible location such as a ground floor locker. Similarly, as for drones, there are regulatory obstacles which do need to be overcome. Operating rules vary greatly from country to country. As robot vans will travel on public roads, issues such as road tax and public insurance will also need to be considered. In most countries, they have been put on trial in only specific and limited areas. Robot vans operate best in locations with good and orderly infrastructure such as well-paved roads, white pavements and functional traffic lights. Making a place robot van friendly will be similar to making it disabled friendly and much more, which even first world cities are not quite there yet. Robot vans need to wait at the curbside for customers to come and collect their parcels. This may not be possible in the city area and may even be challenging in a housing estate. 
But then again, how do you issue a parking ticket to a robot van? So, will artificial intelligence and automation shape the future of transportation? Undoubtedly so. However, it may be still quite a while before fully autonomous trucks, drones and robots become the norm in our daily lives. Hybrid transportation solutions incorporating the more trend tested elements are however now more widely available in the market. The Vision Van is the world's first van at the center of a completely digitally networked supply chain, from the distribution center to receiving. It demonstrates how goods might be delivered in the future with an intelligent vehicle and integrated drones. The Vision Van comes with a fully automated cargo space management system. AGVs load packages automatically, algorithms control order of loading and picking, as well as route planning, and at delivery point, the packages are automatically dispensed. Fully integrated drones deliver packages autonomously within a radius of 10 km, and the dashboard dis displays all necessary information and allows the driver to interface with the system seamlessly. This is the intelligent delivery figure of the future. With that, we have come to the end of lecture now. See you next time.